वट इज अप गाइज कैसे हो आप लोग वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी थ्री राइड्स चैनल आई हैव बीन राइडिंग द रॉयल एनफील्ड हिमालयन फॉर द पास्ट फोर टू फाइव डेज एंड वाइल डूइंग वन ऑफ दीज राइड्स आई येस्टडे आई मेट अ गाय कॉल्ड अभिनव एंड ही इज अ ट्वेंटी फोर ईयर ओल्ड गाय हु राइड्स अ जी टी सिक्स फिफ्टी अभिनव कैन यू कम इन द फ्रेम वॉट्स अप मैन आई एम गुड सो आई थिंक वी वर डिस्कसिंग वेन वी मेट येस्टरडे दैट यू हैव सोल्ड योर जी टी सिक्स फिफ्टी Just yes. a couple of days back. Yes, couple of days back. I have to. What happened, man? It's just a beautiful motorcycle. It's, it's like uh, recently I have a Expulse also. So the kind of stance now I am liking. Like example, GT is much more mm. aggressive and all. So mm. much more into adventure. And uh, okay. I have done some uh, Ladakh ride. Then I understood the necessity of a bigger engine when okay. I was there. So basically, you are looking for a. मोर पावरफुल एडवेंचर बाइक थोड़ी ज्यादा पावर हो जिसमें थोड़ा सा और फन हो राइट मजा आए थोड़ा जब थ्रोटल दे तो चले सो यू सॉ द हिमालयन एंड यू आर यू नो आस्किंग मी लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस पता नहीं कितने क्वेश्चंस तूने मेरे से कल पूछ दिए सो या सो आई थॉट व्हाई नॉट मेक दिस वीडियो फ्रॉम अ पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ अ पर्सन हु इज वांटिंग टू गेट अ मच मोर पावरफुल एडवेंचर बाइक ही ऑलरेडी हैज एन एक्सपल्स तो एक्सपल्स तो यार सबको पता है ऑफरोडिंग वगैरह में बहुत बढ़िया है बट ही वांट्स टू गो अ लेवल अबव अ लेवल सो In this video, what we'll try to do is address about thirteen to fourteen questions that anyone would have in their mind if they have not ridden the Himalayan. By the end, I think you will have a fair idea whether you want to upgrade to the Himalayan 450 or maybe add it to your garage if you already have another adventure touring motorcycle in place. Honestly, I'm a Royal Enfield boy. Hmm. Uh, as always, we always used to aspire having hmm. a bullet. Yeah. Uh, obviously. Why not? Hmm. <laughs> it, it was a status symbol at the same time. Uh, but the thing is, uh, for me, I was entering into the adventure market, and mm. uh, even w- um, in 2020, I bought a GT 650. Mm-hmm. But I was desperately looking for 660 Himalayan. Honestly, the leaks were there, okay. and I I don't know that it was 440, but majority say that it was 660. Uh, 650, 660, whatever. 660 yeah. and all, uh, 650. Yeah, I yeah. would say 650. But the thing is, uh, uh, then I saw the Expulse also at the same time. Mm-hmm. But I want to put. It's almost two uh, lakhs around will be the Expulse Rally and two mm. forty yeah. around will be the uh, Himalayan. Himalayan four one one. But the thing mm. is, uh, certain videos I saw and also I was waiting that something will launch mm. some because that time I think so GTs were out, Interceptor was out. So I was looking for um, for Himalayan itself, but then due to that uh, reviews and also I have seen a video I think so in which the whole in Ladakh itself the, the whole, whole handlebar was yeah handlebar with chassis was. Yeah, in the other now. side, yeah. and also the although I love that bike, mm-hmm. it have all, a big following if you see in the market, and mm-hmm. it have penetrated the whole adventure market which yeah. we have seen. Yeah, yeah, obviously after that itself, yeah. uh, KTM 390 ADV came and all mm-hmm. these. So what is this hype? Himalayan, like mm-hmm. Himalayan 450, the tagline. There has been obviously a huge hype about this launch. Yeah, I think. Maybe after Chandrayaan, this is the most hype thing that we have heard <laughs> in 2023. This is a motorcycle that has received a lot of uh, attention globally, and I feel that uh, the first model of the Himalayan that was there, 411, uh, when it was released in 2016, uh, it had a lot of expectations from it. But uh, while off road it was very good, but on road it इट लेफ्ट अ लॉट ऑफ रूम ऑफ इम्प्रूवमेंट पीपल वर सेंग इसमें पावर थोड़ी सी कम है हाईवे पे चलाने में मजा नहीं आता uh, थोड़ा सा रिलायबिलिटी इशूज वर ऑल्सो देयर बट वट दे हैव डन विद द फोर फिफ्टी इफ आई हैव टू टर्म इट इट विल बी वेरी अनफेयर टू कॉल इट एन अपग्रेड इट इज अ कम्प्लीटली न्यू मोटरसाइकिल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन या इट्स अ कम्प्लीट ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन या दैट्स दैट्स पॉसिबली द राइट वर्ड बिकॉज इंजन हैज चेंज द चैसी हैज चेंज The whole dimensions of the motorcycle has changed. I'm pretty sure you would also, yeah, you know, have the a lights. Look and lights was the yeah. point when I was looking. Okay, yeah. is, is this a different brand or is a Royal Enfield? Absolutely. So they have added a lot of, you know, modern stuff. Uh, like you were talking about the lights. You yeah. look at the instrument cluster. So beautiful. A host of changes are happening. I wouldn't call it a upgrade at all. I mean, it's not like an upgrade that you see on the product. Facelift. Okay, iPhone 13, yeah. say iPhone 13 Pro or iPhone 14, say iPhone 14 Pro. It's not. something like that it's a major overhaul for anyone who has ridden a 411 himalayan this is a completely new motorcycle the name is i think the only thing that kind of remains same the changes that have been made are so huge and towards betterment that this feels like a brand new adventure touring motorcycle so jasmine what are the major changes if you look at it from a visual standpoint yesterday i was you know having a look at the specs and all about 13 things that i could find which were like worth noting from a visual standpoint that have changed in the himalayan the first thing is obviously the 
LED headlamps and the tail lamps. 17 liter tank, 3 liter increase. The suspension is new. So the previous Himalayan had telescopic, telescopic forks. Yeah. This is a upside, upside down, down fork setup from Showa. 200 mm of travel at the yeah. front and now the rear travel is also 200 mm. The rear tire is now 140 cross section compared to the 120. You see new switch setup on both the sides of the handlebar. Single pod instrument cluster okay. which has a screen which you can use to navigate. It has a brand new exhaust by the way. Looks beautiful. Yeah, the previous Himalayan had a longer exhaust. This is a shorter exhaust. Then you have the better seat. The previous Himalayan had a 300 mm disc brake. This is a 320 mm disc brake. Mm. Same goes at the rear as well. 240 to 270 mm disc brake. 30 mm increase in the size there as well. Okay. And when you talk about the overall dimensions, this has a longer wheelbase. Longer wheelbase. Did you feel that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. When I saw it, it, it's much more like the long, long wheelbase when I saw it. When, uh, when you were riding, when mm. I saw you, it looks like something different. Not yeah. the Himalayan. It looks like something which is more... Much more expensive, expensive right? Yeah. Ground clearance is increased by 10 mm. And finally, the wheels on the new Himalayan, while this model has the traditional spoke Spokes. wheels, there is an option of getting tubeless spoke wheels on the Himalayan. So why they are not coming right now? Which everybody so is waiting for. Them. What I heard is that there is some sort of a regulatory reason. Okay. Because for them to offer these tubeless spoke wheels, they need to have some sort of a, a go ahead from the government in terms of the make in India thing or you know having suppliers who have okay. who can actually make these tubeless spoke wheels in India. So that restriction is not there if they are selling outside India. Okay. That's why whenever it launches outside India, those rims will be available and they will be available. Apart from that, they also have now introduced the ride by wire throttle. Okay which is something that you get in a KTM 390 Adventure, 390, right? Yeah. Ride by uh, wire would essentially mean you now have access to the uh, riding modes as well. So they are offering uh, three modes. One is a standard road mode. road mode. Then there is an off-road mode in which the ABS on the rear is turned off. And then there is another mode called the eco mode, where maybe they are trying to, you know, make it better from a mileage city, standpoint. City and, all. and one more change I think which is worth noticing is the slip and assist clutch. Okay. That means the clutch is very smooth. Smooth, yeah. Yeah, so it is very forgiving as well when you are aggressively downshifting. Especially so, in off-roads. Yeah. It will be yeah. a major... And advantage. while cornering also, it will not throw you off the rear wheel, will not suddenly skid. Skid. If you are downshifting aggressively. And one thing that I feel has really improved with that slip and assist clutch is the feel of the gear lever is very smooth. I have recently was riding the Scrambler 400X from Triumph. Okay, yeah. Even though that motorcycle was beautiful and the fit and finish is amazing. One thing that I felt could have been improved in that motorcycle is the smoothness of the gearing. Gearing. Uh, this one is so smooth. I like to give that example. Even if you are riding in your chappals. Okay. Even with the slightest of, you know, push from your thumb, the gear will slot very easily that's how smooth the gear shifting is what are the other questions you have in mind how does it ride like what you yeah. feel when you are in the road with this huge it looks huge now yeah so what is the feeling after riding this motorcycle for almost five days what i feel is this is a very enjoyable machine there are two or three main reasons why i call it enjoyable one is the increased power I'm just trying to rev this motorcycle unnecessarily just to understand how this feels and how punchy it feels and I think you can easily also get an idea of how this thing revs out I am actually loving the exhaust note on this motorcycle the initial walk around videos that we saw with the media folks doing that ride in Manali all those exhaust notes were when the motorcycle was at a standstill and you were just opening the throttle but actually when you're riding this motorcycle there is something about the exhaust that I am starting to like already. Of course, that original RE thump is not there, but then there is some sort of a typical sound that you get from a dual sport motorcycle. Yo, this goes to 100 in a jiffy. <laughs> now this is going to be one entertaining ride, I tell you guys. 
never ever thought in my wildest of imaginations that a Himalayan would ride like that. For me, who is coming from a Tiger 900, who is used to that punchy motor, a Himalayan with its pedestrian 24 bhp is always look like something which is gonna bore you out on the highway. But but this thing is anything but boring. Wow 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 wow! What an exhaust note. So, 24 bhp I don't think was ever enough. I mean, I think so. Expels yeah. have 19. Yeah, so, so you, you know, look at the power to weight ratio and all that stuff. The 16 bhp increase in power is something that you will definitely feel and enjoy. And see, while I was riding on the highway while coming towards uh, Haridwar a couple of days back, on the open stretches of road, I never ever felt any sort of uh, lack of power. Here, 85, 88, 89 kmph, and let's go. Going till 120 km per hour is not an issue on this motorcycle. I clearly remember on the 411 Himalayan, everything was vibrating. It was not feeling in its comfortable zone when you used to push the motorcycle. So that has completely changed, right? So high speed riding on the highway, 110, 120, this machine can do it all day long. That, Even the torque, I think. Yeah, so the previous. torque also. Yes, 32 Newton meters of torque was there in the previous Himalayan. This is 40, 40 bhp. And I think so lower RPM, what I have heard, yeah. 2000 something it will. Yes, yes, exactly. So 90% of the 40 Newton meters of torque, that means 36 Newton meters of torque is available from 3000 3, RPM. Itself. Which means that your bike will essentially never stall. Okay. I mean, at the sixth gear will be. Yeah. Whatever gear you are yeah. in, you can push the motorcycle and get out of a tricky situation. <laughs> अब तो पीछे से भी ठोकना शुरू कर दिया लोगों ने यार <laughs> उड़ते हुए आ रहे हैं घुसार देंगे गाड़ी को The gear shifting is very smooth that is something that I already mentioned Yeah The riding geometry of the motorcycle nobody had a complaint with the riding geometry previously also because this was one of the most comfortable machines they have now made it even more comfortable with the new seat uh, with that extra padding and the premium look on the seat and the whole experience of throttling the motorcycle that has completely changed because while coming to Haridwar I 
intentionally took a stretch which was not on the expressway and went through some areas which had a lot of traffic where people were riding in a very stupid manner coming from here and there and I had to do a lot of overtakes. So that is surprisingly one of the places that I enjoyed riding the motorcycle the most because I was zipping through traffic right left taking sharp turns and cutting through traffic which I never thought I'll be able to do on a Himalayan. It almost felt like I was riding a naked motorcycle like a Duke 390. <laughs> never heard a single cylinder motorcycle sound so sweet while the scrambler 400x that i rode recently had a good exhaust note this kind of trumps it even if you look at any of the 390 engines that the ktm offers duke 390 adv 390 i don't think they have a good sounding exhaust their exhausts are very mediocre this is something that will keep you entertained when you are doing those maneuvers right left and throttling the bike hard on the highway as well next i'm curious about it how much it vibrates and heats. That was one of the major issues. Vibration was the major issue which yeah. I went into the expels. Yeah. When you have 411 foot Obviously that, that used to vibrate a and lot. Heat also is one of the yeah. thing. Heating was also an issue in the 411. Surprisingly, the vibrations are curtailed in a very good manner on the 450. I wouldn't say that it doesn't vibrate. That would be wrong because you need to keep your expectations in check. Any single cylinder motorcycle will vibrate. Obviously, this is not a Suzuki motorcycle or a Japanese engine. Those levels of refinement you can't expect. But those motorcycles then have their limitations as well. The type of flexibility this motorcycle offers is amazing. I felt the vibrations in the lower gears. When you are revving it hard or maybe doing 110, 120, nothing that concerns you. Uh, the vibrations become concerning once you are in that range of about 135 kilometers per hour okay. plus speed that is where you start feeling that everything is vibrating a little but to answer your question there are vibrations much less than the previous himalayan it's only in the low revs when you're starting the motorcycle or maybe riding at 25 30 kmph 40 kmph where you will feel the roughness slight roughness in the engine but that vanishes away once you open the throttle Talking about the heat that you mentioned, I actually took this motorcycle yesterday into a crowded bazaar uh, near this place called uh, Jwalapur in Haridwar. There is a very famous bazaar called Katera Bazaar. So I had to buy some sweets, some Diwali sweets and I took my motorcycle, took the Himalayan 450 into that bazaar knowing that there, it will be choco block, lot of bumper to bumper traffic, yeah. cycles, auto rickshaws, everything coming in here and there and to check what sort of heat is coming out from the motorcycle, I intentionally didn't wear my riding gear okay. because all these riding pants also have some yeah. heat insulation. I didn't wear my riding boots so that, you know, I can feel the heat, whatever is coming out and on my thighs. the liquid cooling is the new one. Yes. So I think so the radiator will have some, some heat. Some yeah. heat, yeah. So this is the traffic that I was anticipating, huh? bumper to bumper, first gear. So now we have the engine temperature. So right now, if you look at the engine temperature before entering in this, into this whole bazaar scenario, it's what? It's in the middle right now. So maybe like a 90 degrees Celsius, that is where the engine temperature is right now. And let's go from here. First gear crawl happening. So far, a crawl on the Himalayan, totally impressed because the earlier version of Himalayan, the 411, used to heat up like anything oh adja doggy it has been just amazing and let's see where the temperature is right now the engine temperature is still hovering around the 100 degree mark right now 90 between 90 and 100 that's what i can say so i can feel some sort of mild heat on my right side so this is after all we have done which is not 
something that was very extreme but what 99% of the audience want to buy an himalayan will have will be doing is going into those bazaars and getting stuff so a little bit of heat just on the right side which is considerably lower than what used to be the case with the 411 the older himalayan uh, so does the longer wheelbase affect its off roading capabilities so basically i rode it off road on the trails like where yesterday where we met and today also we are doing yeah. some sort of trails i didn't feel any sort of issue that was you know coming just because of the longer wheelbase i feel that this is one of the easiest motorcycles to get your rear wheel sliding out okay. i'm not a guy who does a lot of off roading goes hunting for trails intentionally my theory is whatever touring that you do whatever off road comes in between that is something that your motorcycle needs to do hence i always go for touring motorcycle and for that purpose i think this is an amazing machine since we are talking about the off road hmm. what about the qualities like as we have seen in the 411 hmm. uh, the rust is, is one of the major issues yeah and uh, one of the major, uh, one of the famous video which we have seen the chassis is breaking, chassis off breaking and all that stuff yeah. so i know what you are talking about uh, obviously i have not ridden it enough and right now this motorcycle is brand new and saying that it has addressed all of those issues will be something like jumping the gun right now and you know uh, talking out of line it will obviously take about 6 7 months of ownership for anyone to talk about rusting of bolts or the quality issues that might come up with ownership but as of now what i feel and i think you can also see yeah. is that the overall fit and finish and the build quality of the motorcycle kind of feels much more better than what we had in the 411 411 yeah so that's all i can say i can't say that it's like perfect in terms of quality and all but from whatever i have ridden so far 500 600 kilometers everything seems to be just on point i haven't faced any sort of issues so can i use it as a commuter biker as majority of my time will be in the city mm-hmm. dehradun haridwar and all these places yeah. so what's your take on that yeah i think so this can do uh, the stuff that we are expected to do if we are buying a motorcycle in india let's be very frank the first thing that our parents would ask or our family would ask is what is the use of this motorcycle for us you are going to do rides but will it be useful in getting stuff from the market getting vegetables from the market i think one of the picture you have shown us in which you have put some of yeah the, uh, yeah so like i was telling you yesterday i was yesterday i went in that market and i bought some sweets so the final test of the himalayan 450 was riding from down south to umlingla 19024 feet but one more test is the bazaar test the diwali bazaar test and and where we are we have this whole big packet of sweets diwali sweets that i am taking from this shop and i am using this uh, mounting mechanism here to place the <coughs> bag here and i think this is going to work <laughs> built in mechanism to hang your vegetable bags so i think this is the ultimate test let's see how it goes see how this uh, bag of sweets is hanging this is like almost 5 kgs i hope it survives bahut sari it has a lot of diwali sweets this whole uh, upper fairing protector has these hooks two on the right two on the left in fact there are a lot more hooks so i think these are meant to carry those jerry cans and tie in some luggage but yeah four five hooks on each side i think two are perfectly usable for carrying luggage from your market by the way i am extremely impressed with how this himalayan is behaving at these crawling speeds this is one trait that is super critical for any sort of motorcycle that needs to serve or i should say wear all types of hats possible because when you are selling a motorcycle in india it needs to do everything including a trip to the local bazaar to get some vegetables milk along with a trip to khardungla umlingla and zanskar so those are high expectations to fulfill and <laughs> till now i trust you me i think this motorcycle is kind of ticking the box in every segment so 
that is a that is a tick in the box for me definitely it can be used as a commuter bike and one more thing that comes to mind since you're talking about commuting is the mileage okay yeah uh, from what i have seen so far from one tank full to another this is giving me a mileage of around 26 27 and i have ridden it at varied okay. sort of speeds i have not ridden it at a very constant 17. 80 or a 90 constant on a highway like i was testing the motorcycle so i rode it in different speeds Manners. different gears okay. throttling unnecessarily where when it was not required breaking, i think you so you know in a very silly manner yeah, as well yeah. and braking unnecessarily and then revving it again very hard trying to do some top speed sort of runs as well even after all that it was giving me a mileage of around 26 from what i have seen so far if somebody rides it in a sane manner properly like it should be ridden maybe on a long ride 35 i think easily it will go to 28 plus plus okay. maybe 30 as well yeah depending on how you ride but i would say 28 could 27 28 could be a figure where which is which is something that you can expect if you are riding properly not sure of how the eco mode performs because they have also given a eco mode which ideally should give better mileage but that is something that i am yet to test out okay as you have mentioned there are many features and there are many new improvements mm. which they have done in the himalayan mm. is there any room for improvement still frankly speaking for now what i found out to be an area of improvement is the instrument cluster that they have i feel that although this looks good and uh, with the maps and all but it feels a little laggy that's what i felt okay the controls the joystick and all behaved a little strangely when i was trying to you know move left or right on the screen and sometimes it got stuck and gave me an error that you need to switch off the ignition and then it will start working again try changing the mode once you switch off the ignition ye kya ho raha hai bhai mode change delayed acha the attempt to change the mode has failed so okay. those sort of things happened but those are you know software issues of this display that they have mounted for the first time apart from that from a general riding standpoint i don't think there is anything that is glaringly wrong in the motorcycle so far this is a big surprise for me when we talk about royal enfield motorcycles generally i have not been a very big fan but this one is one of those motorcycles where if you keep your expectations in line with the price point at which the motorcycle is coming obviously we don't know the price point but i don't think it will be more than 3.5 lakhs in any case that's my hunch about it but in that price segment the type of product that you're getting i think it is commendable um, just a few things here and there like this software issue on the instrument cluster and it will be almost near perfect for a beginner who is starting off with riding it is not very intimidating because the okay. power is not delivered in a manner that it will shake you or surprise you slow and constant delivery of power which will help you learn to you know ride bigger bikes for somebody who is used to riding bigger bikes like me you know riding a tiger 800 for 3 4 years now a tiger 900 ridden the gs as well 1200 50 as well i feel that this is still a very entertaining motorcycle and can be one of the second motorcycles that i can have in my garage okay so and for someone like you yeah i have answered all your questions <laughs> man but <laughs> What do you feel about the motorcycle? I mean, do you feel that this could be one of the options you can look at? Would you want to invest money in this right now or maybe wait for the other options that are coming in? My take will be as Royal Field have took this very seriously and made it much premium mm. which we have seen from 411 to 450. Yeah. But the only thing is like uh, I want to wait for uh, that I it's it's kind of a my favorite one, the Rally uh, 450. Version, the Rally version. I hope they will bring it soon. because as the market is full of adbs yeah and if any other comes i'll have to consider them also otherwise it is one of the good option if i have to buy it right now yeah it but is, obviously you are waiting for yeah, the for the rally spec rally spec version yeah i know a lot of people are hyped about that i wish they can do as soon as possible as yeah. cause many other in, um, companies are entering with their adbs then yeah. i have to look and i have to compare obviously the yeah. choices will change the options will yeah. change it changes with the seasons <laughs> at the yeah. same time so till then you will be waiting yeah, yeah. till then <laughs> as i waited i think so it's been 3 to 4 years i have been waiting for this himalayan yeah. now i just have to wait for the rally <laughs> spec let's see hope it will come soon so that is it uh, that is all i wanted to share in this video i tried to keep it very simple this time around answer all the questions somebody like abhinav would have 
because he is right now in the market uh, looking for a bigger ADV. If there are any other questions that you guys have, please let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer them and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.